Welcome back. It's called Daniel's Law, and it's named after 20-year-old Daniel Androl, who was shot and killed by a man who showed up at the family home looking for his mother, U.S. District Judge Esther Salas. The man bought the address from someone on the internet. Daniel's Law would make that a crime. Here to talk more about the law and other legal issues in New Jersey is Suzette Parmley from the New Jersey Law Journal. Let's talk about Daniel's Law. What is that? Daniel's Law, Larry, is named after Daniel Anderl, who is the 20-year-old late son of federal judge, New Jersey Federal District Judge Esther Salas, who was gunned down on um, July 19th this past summer by uh, an assailant who posed as a FedEx delivery man in uniform with a hidden gun. He answers the door. He is shot to death. And the father, Mark Anderl, Daniel's father, was also critically wounded in the shooting. Basically, the uh, uh, Roy Den Hollander, who the FBI eventually tracked down but committed suicide, accessed the family's home address uh, on the Internet, found where they lived, tracked them down, and basically ambushed the family residence. So would this law would stop that from happening, stop, stop anyone from being able to get an address of a federal officer or a police officer on the web? Basically, it's not, it's going to try to prevent such future tragedies. It's um, basically going to make it a third degree or fourth degree crime now, punishable from fourth degree crime, 18 months to a third degree crime, three to five years. If you knowingly put out information out there involving the home addresses, personal information, social security numbers of, uh, Uh, former current judges, prosecutors, law enforcement officers. What this law is trying to do is uh, basically keep people from trying to purposely get the information of a judge or a prosecutor or law enforcement that is being sold online. If you're trying to sell that information, that this is applicable to you. You are not to publish on the internet the addresses or the the personal cell phone numbers of law enforcement officers, judges, or prosecutors. That is what the the intent of the bill is to do. It cannot prevent every tragedy out there. It's trying to prevent fewer of them from happening. Let's talk about body cameras. It's finally passed the legislature, right? Yes, it passed yesterday by uh, 39 to zero. And um, it's a good intent. Again, uh, the funding has been the problem. Um, And also, there is an irony to this. I wrote about this on Monday. The, I called it a modern day digital age irony where this bill was first introduced under a different number in 2014 by uh, Mercer County uh, Democratic Senator Shirley Turner, who's been in the Senate for a long time. And it was over um, the, the shooting death of uh, an 18 year old black man in Ferguson, Missouri in 2014. And she couldn't get the bill anywhere uh, in language for six years. Memorial Day, fast forward, Memorial Day, summer 2020, you have the George Floyd incident on footage captured on, you know, on video going viral internationally. And all of a sudden, within weeks, this bill finally gets a hearing in Trenton. Uh, The last couple months, it has basically went through all the legislative hoops and mandating statewide, local, municipal, county, statewide police officers will be required to wear what's called a BWC, body-worn camera, on them while on duty at all times to capture every sound, every image, everything they do while on, on, on the job. But here we go again, because there's a lot of legislation that's passed and has a funding problem and then doesn't get funded. Is there something in the law that makes certain this gets funded? Yes. Um, S3089, uh, the accompanying bill to the body camera bill was passed by the Senate president and the assembly speaker uh, supported and uh, several sponsors took it on, including Sweeney. They basically said, we're going to find a $58 million. We're going to make this happen. I talked with Declan O'Scanlan and I've talked to a couple of other senators who have talked about the marijuana bill and they have problems with the taxation of the bill. Is that the holdup at this point? Oh, it's that's one of them. Uh, you talk to anybody who's had uh, similar legislation passed in other states like Illinois, 
this took them a year to get going. And because of all the negotiation, they have the, I was told they have the same issues they had last year when the failed marijuana bill was trying to get through the Senate. You have everybody wanting a piece of the revenue pie. You have those who have felt they've been wrong by the war on drugs that want better, better terms under it and better uh, access to establishing these things if they're minorities. So you have the licenses at stake, you have the cultivators who have to now more than triple or double their cultivation now that they're gonna be selling, not just to the med medical marijuana clientele, to the general public. So they claim they wanna do this by the end of the year. You don't see that happening. Not this year, by the end of next year, <laughs> 12 months. between. Really? You believe it's gonna take that long? For a full-fledged, cannabis market in New Jersey, I was told it's going to be 12 months between implementing the enabling legislation, which will be in January. Then you have to put in the regulatory framework. Then you have to grow the marijuana. <laughs> have litigation. Oh, somebody's growing the marijuana already. <laughs> There's some stuff out there that's already happening. One last thing I want to talk about, sure. and that is they're shutting down grand juries and courtrooms once yes. again. But when they did this last time, they went virtual. They went virtual. But I would see problems with that. I, I can see challenges to that. Oh, absolutely. It was challenged um, on constitutional grounds. You have attorneys, uh, defense attorneys who made a stink that um, how do you know, you know, what's being presented is not being tainted because you can't see them there right now. You can't see the jurors there. It's, it's virtual. And you are not getting a representative pool in a virtual jury, according to defense attorneys, because people don't want to participate. They don't have the technical, technological warehouse, uh, know how to, to pull this off. And they, on, on several constitutional grounds, they challenged the virtual grand juries. Uh, and now you have no in-person grand juries either. So it's been back and forth. I, wrote, I last wrote about this issue in October where they were resuming um, grand juries. Now they're pulling back again. And it coincided with the governor's mandate yesterday, directive, pulling back on, on crowd gatherings because of a record spike in COVID cases over this weekend in New Jersey and other states. You can see a slew of appeals, a slew of challenges just because a case was held or a decision was made virtually or a grand jury decided away virtually. This is going to be a mess probably for a while to come. I really yes. appreciate your, yeah, I really appreciate your time. You're a wealth of information. Thank you so much. Thank you, Larry. It's a pleasure. Suzette Parmley from the New Jersey Law Journal. When we come right back, will public schools in New Jersey shut down again? We'll talk about it when Jersey Matters comes right back. <laughs> 